brothers and sisters. So it's good to continue on our journey in this series of the battle for our minds and our hearts uh, in the Catholic tradition of the great teachings and wisdoms of the saints. And we're particularly looking at the Ignatian spiritual tradition, which is a very funny thing for a Dominican to do. Um, but of course, Ignatius is building on a whole tradition there of teachings and thoughts coming from that he he received, although he put his own personal stamp on it. So we're just drawing on maybe some lessons from him as we learn about how to navigate, you know, a life that can throw up so many um, anxieties and problems and, and, and battles in the mind and heart and how to find peace and to be able to stay with the Lord and to, to stay in relationship with the Lord in a, in a calm way so that we could hear the voice of the Holy Spirit more and receive his promptings and be docile. And so we've been talking about, you know, uh, uh, about different passages of scripture from St. Paul. And there's another passage of scripture which we, we need to consider. And it is one that points about, you know, how we must make an effort to remake our minds. St. Paul says to the Philippians, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace will be with you. So this is a very important passage and, and Dan in his book is, is referencing this because he says there's a word there in that passage that is really important to safeguarding peace and it's the word think. You know, we have to make an effort to ponder the truth, to consider the truth, you know, and I would extend, you know, to, to learn our doctrine, to learn what Christ has taught, to learn the words of his scripture, to hold that truth in our heart and constantly return to it. Because our minds, as I said before, have been wounded by sin. And so the mind needs healing. The mind, the mind needs sanctification. And that way, when the mind finds greater healing, the heart, our desires will find healing. They will be properly reordered um, to, towards God. And there is peace. Peace comes from the proper ordering. So he says that the idea of hiding in my heart the good things and dwelling on the good things seemed to be connected um, to considering to pondering on the truth on the gospel uh, will bring us peace and we spoke about this a couple times in the videos and he says that that you know to 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 fill the mind with the right things will take will lead us to make concrete decisions in our life about how by allowing what we can, by, by discerning, you know, the, the things that we're putting into our mind and heart. Because often we become what we think, we, what we read, what we, what we listen to, the conversations with the kind of people that we have, you know, the dialogues that we're involved in, all that forms our mind. So we must make a real effort to form our mind with the truth. And, and to, so therefore to be able to build that wall of truth around our mind and heart, which allows us to ascend in, in times of prayer to contemplation, which is a, give, a grace given by God to raise us up, you know, to have a loving knowledge of himself, you know, uh, infused into our hearts. So we need to build this wall around our mind and heart with, with solid truth and so that our minds would be remade. You know, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious. You could always know the heart of someone by the words that they say, you know, the filth that they might get engaged to, the backbiting, the, the, the gossip, the, you know, the whatever it is. Already that's maybe signs that the person is not walking in the Lord or, or maybe do not have the gift of love, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit, maybe dwelling in their hearts. And so it calls for real examination of conscience, um, especially if it's a, a prolonged habit. So... So he says, Dan says it was very clear to him that he had to change his life. So he, you know, he'd got, he started to get a garbage cans and getting rid of, you know, ca you know, cassettes at the time or what we might say, CDs or maybe just your, you, your, your, your iPod list, you know, your music that, that is, may not be inspired by the Holy Spirit at all. And that is full of maybe sometimes violence or derogatory things or things that we're listening to that we're not even conscious of, but we're putting it into our soul. 
you know, he said that, you know, one of the best decisions he ever made was he tossed out his television because it was taking up too much time. And how many of us waste so much time on the television instead of being attentive to our family duties, to our work duties? You know, how many of us lose so much of precious time that could be given to pray? Um, and basically, the television at times could be a, is a suction cup for our joy and our peace. So he says just some points here, you know, weapons um, for us to fight, to fight the battle against anxiety and fear is that first of all, be aware you're in a spiritual battle. And, and as the church teaches, the devil and his fallen angels are out to destroy your peace in your mind. Uh, but yet comfort yourself that God has won this battle and, and that he and it will be won with his help. And then discover the approach to rejecting lies and embracing truth that can have a tangible effect. Then don't forget your prayer and supplication and your need to control your mind to learn what is true and good and to bring this to the Lord.